Taxes, taxes, taxes. There are lots of them involved in, in any business that you set up. One of the key ones is VAT or value added tax. It is a complicated tax, but Neil and I in this video are gonna try and make it as simple as we can to give you the basics. Welcome back to the Basics of Business channel, everybody, where myself as a business owner, as Neil, as an experienced accountant and business advisor, are trying to help you fast track uh, your business decisions from day one to make it as good ones as you can. VAT, Neil, we could probably do a three hour video on VAT. We're trying to make it as simple as possible just for, to get people a basic understanding. What, what is value added tax? Yeah, as you say, it is a very complicated and complex tax, but in its basic terms, it's a sales tax. So it's a, a, a consumption tax. So it's you add on VAT to the price of your goods if you if the service is a standard rated VAT service. In a nutshell, it's it is actually a simple process if what you're doing is simple. So if it was me providing a consulting service to UK-based businesses, then that's fine. I'm going to invoice someone £100 for an hour of my time. I have to charge them 20% VAT on top of the £100. I send them a bill for £120. They send me the money. Once a quarter, I then complete a VAT return. And I add up all the £20 I've charged my customers, yep. total it up, put it in box one on the VAT return. I then see all the people who have charged me for services. Is there any VAT on that? I add that all up to see how much VAT I've been charged in the quarter. I put that in box four, take one away from the other. So if I've charged more than I've been charged, take the input, the that I've been charged away from what I've charged. If it's a positive number, I owe the VAT man that and I charge, I pay it to the VAT office. If it's a negative figure, then I've been charged more than I've charged people. I can actually recover that VAT from the VAT man. That is VAT in a nutshell for a UK based business supplying UK based businesses a service that is standard rated. And that probably applies to, you know, totally. the old 80, 20. So I can't help smiling when you're saying simple and bad. Well, the same. But because it, it, it is a hidden... Sorry. Something went wrong. Oh, that's right. Shortcut says this sorry, just cannot be technical right. Technical difficulties. Missing. It's all right. Missing, 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 you buy, you see something for 20 bucks and they go, oh, that's great. And then you go up to the counter and they go, 33. Yeah, but that, well, it's always like plus tax, plus yeah. tax. Whereas in the UK, it's not as obvious in a tax. Because... But I think in, in the US, you have, you know, you have federal sales tax, you have local sales taxes yeah. and all that stuff. But just that at the counter yeah. makes that much more obvious. Yes. Tax. And it is a tax that you as the business are collecting on behalf of the, of the government. You're almost being the tax the yeah. tax man doing the tax man's job for a little bit. That's what people say. I'm an unpaid tax collector. Yeah. You know, that, that is a term that people use. But and as I said, I've just described, if you are supplying some form of consulting service, graphic designer, whatever it might be, it's you supplying that to UK-based businesses, then in its simplest, you charge VAT, people charge you VAT once a quarter, you yeah. just total them up and pay it to the Batman. That, but... And the it, 80, but what I was going yeah. to say is that's 80% of the UK, let's say, but the tiny percent, if you're not doing that, if you're doing something slightly different, if you're importing, if you're exporting, if you've got three different types of services and one of them is exempt, yeah, those, so that's right. when it gets really, really, really complicated. If we, if we stick to the simple example of, of the UK, to, and to, when, we, when we register... It's now, the, the budget's just come out, it's now and turnover in the last year of £90,000 yeah. and you, what, your product or service is, is vatable and will we'll throw up on the screen of, 
what services are and products are vatable. It's a very handy list of a thousand pages. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and it, it, is it vatable or exempt or outside and the, the scope key. of VAT? And that, the 90 key, that is your sort of, a, the nutshell, I know it's much, but as in, those are the two key sort of metrics. Yeah. Of, do you charge it or not? Yeah, so the 90K is compulsory VAT registration. So if you're supplying VA VATable services and your turnover in the last 12 months has been over £90,000, you must register for VAT. You can voluntarily register if your turnover is below that. You can voluntarily register if your turnover is going to get there, but you're not there yet. So again, it can get more complicated. But yeah, if you are supplying a VATable service and your turnover is over £90,000, okay. no you choice. must yeah. register for VAT. Yeah. The, and just to, back to the review of, of how, so if you're, and that works like that, and you fill in a form, I say we'll throw, throw up the link or whatever, we might do a video on showing how you'd register, you fill in a form, you work out your VAT through, through the software and you report either monthly or quarterly or annually even, is that right? Standard is quarterly, so the VAT quarters. If you are always going to be in a repayment situation because you're, all, you're, you're supplying a service that is, say, zero rated, but you're incurring standard rated costs, you are allowed to file monthly returns so you can get the VAT back quicker. If your turnover is under 1.35 million, you can file an annual return. I can't really see the point because you still have to make on account payments every quarter and that that sort of first of that's almost it can be a cash flow point can't it in terms of if you're not if you're waiting for a quarter but there's a lot of that going in it can be a can be a cash flow thing yeah i mean if you're um you know if you're fitting out a premises you're building something you're incurring vat you've got to pay your builder a hundred thousand pounds to do the work plus £20,000 VAT, and then you've got to wait three months to get the money back. And then when you file a VAT return saying, I want a refund, the VAT office are very likely to want to ask some questions and whatever, which will delay you getting the money back. Um, it doesn't always happen like that, but it, you know, it's understandable. They just want to check that, hang on, before we send you the money, let's just double check that it's not fake because you know, you, you fill in, you complete your accounting records on zero, you yeah. can put anything you like in there, you then file the back return, and hey, presto, they send you a load of money back, okay. and it's a recognised fraud. But that's what people <laughs> would do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's always ways people are, yeah. yeah. Right. So, as I say, I mean, that is as sort of as simplified as, as we can possibly make it, and it, uh, we're not... We're not going to cover today of should you register for, for from day one, etc. We're going to cover that in another video because that's the sort of pricing decision, yeah. which is can be difficult and it's one that we want to cover and sort of do it in its own sort of give it its own due time. That we've made it as in a nutshell is that we'll talk, it's a complicated tax in terms of just simple example. I'm saying simple examples to show how complicated it is, but you mentioned the import and export. That's just a little taste of how complicated it can, oh, yeah. so, can potentially get. So for me as a, a providing consulting services, and I supply, do some work for a business based in France, let's say, or yeah. the USA, right? Then the place of supply, I'm sitting here in, in the UK doing the work, sending it by email or whatever, but the place of supply for the services I do is where the customer is based. So I have to comply with French or um, USA rules. And then, but, it, but there'll be other services where the place of supply will be where the work is actually carried out. So there would be a whole different set of rules. So, and then you have, whether it's as a, you know, France or the USA, is it inside the EU or outside the EU? There's reverse charge mechanisms where you don't charge VAT, but when you do your VAT return, you pretend you've charged VAT and you pretend that you've been charged VAT, so it all just nets off, but there's there's additional reporting required. VAT is a horrible, horrible tax. Yes. If you're not doing, I say, if you're doing that very simple thing, 
I'm a UK-based consultant. I only work with UK-based businesses. I'm on Zero, Sage, QuickBooks, whatever. You're keeping that all up today. It's a relatively straightforward process. Yeah. Um, but you do anything outside of that, um, and you it can get very complicated yeah. very quickly. quickly. Yeah. And to as, as I say, we've given a broad brush in this video, but this is definitely one. As I say, these videos are for general information of this is the one for professional advice, as in without without any question about it. If you yeah. if, if you're, you're outside that, if you're outside, outside that simple one that we just said, get professional advice, get specialist advice. Yeah. Because yeah, it, it's it's um the the penalties for getting VAT wrong as well is 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 quite severe. Yeah. So as I say, I think it's it's a slightly different question of should you be registering. This is one of the key early decisions that you want to make in your business. The, we're going to cover that in another video. Please go ahead and watch this now. Hope that's been helpful for the overview of that. As ever, we wish you every success with your business journey. Please like this video if you found it useful and we'll see you in another video shortly.